Hello everyone, Palitub here. Welcome back to Diablo 4. I have just over two hours left in the beta for this weekend, and I wanted to dedicate some of that time to the Barbarian. Now, the overwhelming majority of the feedback that I received about this class from you guys, whether it be in Discord, YouTube comments, or Twitch comments, you guys were saying that Barbarian feels weak, and... By comparison, the other classes feel overtuned. The main sticking point for Barbarian seems to be their survivability. So I have built this character from the ground up to hopefully mitigate some of those growing pains and guide you through the early levels of the game. Now, I will say that when I think of Barbarian, I have one specific spell in mind. I just want to Whirlwind, and I tried to force a Whirlwind build from the get-go, and I was just running into a lot of trouble. What the f***, hippie? So I guess I should probably show you a little bit of what the build is about. I can shout and taunt every enemy around me to take reduced damage. If our health begins to fall too much, I then have iron skin for a very big barrier. And all of my fury dumping is being put into rend, which is actually dealing very high amounts of bleed to our enemies for basically no cost at all. And because we don't have to stay in melee range while these bleeds are doing their thing, it enables me to kite around the battlefield a bit more often, get to safety, and not be in direct line of fire of these enemies for a lot of the fight. So for this, I'm gonna do a dungeon I've never done before. This is legitimately my first time doing this. You can tell because I don't have the bonus from this place on my account. That's one of the reasons you should go out and look for dungeons like this. However, it's gonna be a good opportunity to face whatever challenges are in front of us to the best of our ability and try to survive to showcase this. Before we get into the meat of things, and keep in mind, we are still squishy. <laughs> Before we get into the meat of things, let's go over my talents for this setup. So I went with Frenzy, not necessarily because I like Frenzy's mechanic. I do think it is cool to attack faster with each swing up until a cap. But as we hit stuff with Frenzy, we gain Frenzy stacks up to three. And I really wanted this because of combat frenzy. If we have those stacks, if we have our max frenzy, we're gonna be taking 24% less damage all of the time. And you can tell where your stacks are at because of a number on this icon, as well as a bar that forms over your hot bar, over frenzy when uh, it's in effect. So all you have to do is left click stuff to keep that duration going. That's pretty simple. I do also have one point in lunging strike because I don't have any mobility elsewhere in my kit. Lunging Stripe simply allows me to jump towards enemies easier. I just put one point in this. I'm mostly using it for the gap close. Let's say you have progressed far enough down your tree that you want to pick up something like Leap. All you have to do, right click on this, put your point in Leap, and you're good to go. However, I'm going to keep this because Leap has a pretty hefty cooldown. I wouldn't mind also getting like charge and something, but I'm pretty limited in my points at the moment. The main fury spender that we are using is Rend. This is going to cause us to cleave a wide area and bleed out our targets like crazy. You can see the impact damage of Rend is literally 48 tops but the bleed damage of Rend is 353. And every time we right click, we're going to be applying that Rend again and again and again. So you can actually stack up so much bleeding on a single target that they'll just kind of bleed out on their own. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. You can see our frenzy is built up and now our right click just takes care of that problem without us doing anything. To help us mitigate even more damage, I continued down the tree. We're looking at two talents here, Iron Skin. Steal yourself, gaining a barrier that absorbs 50% of your missing life. That means you wanna use this after you're low. And to help us before we get low, I have this Shout, which will taunt enemies around us, force them to attack me, but then also reduce the damage that I am tanking. As our health starts to dip, this is when we would want to use Iron Skin to just make sure that we're cementing our HP there. 
and then we will be good to go. And once again, this is the challenging shout. While challenging shout is active, we gain bonus life with a modifier that we picked up, which makes sense because then we get a bigger shield based on the life that we are missing. And we also double dipped in that a little bit, making iron skin better with uh, taking more of our maximum life for that barrier. So this is a 25 second cooldown. It's gonna give us 40% reduced damage for eight seconds whenever we use it. If we continue to rank this up, you can see that's gonna go to a 45% reduced damage. So investing points into both of these is something that I'm gonna continue to do as we go. Now, I will say that this is not the Barbarian I was expecting to play but the bleed damage is satisfying. Let's say this isn't enough survivability for you. Let's say you're still having some trouble. These are things you can do to help mitigate that. I'm gonna head back to town. Don't worry, we are clearing this dungeon. First things first, you wanna make sure your apothecary is as upgraded as it can be. At level 20, you're able to upgrade your potions, but you can also do that at level 10. As you could see, we're as updated as we can be. There are more tabs here for elixirs, and one in particular is the Iron Barb Elixir. This is the cheapest one to craft, and you can use it at level 5, so I believe it's the earliest one that you can use as well. It's going to take a few thousand gold for me to make some of these, but let's just go ahead and invest. And these actually go into a consumables tab here in your inventory. So by drinking these, I'm going to have 50 more armor, deal thorns damage back to our enemies, but also increase my experience gain for half an hour. So using these will allow us to progress faster in the game while keeping us safer in the game. Alternatively, you could head over to the blacksmith and try to get some of your gear upgraded here. Keep in mind, this is very costly. And as you can see, I don't even have very good equipment in the first place. This is a level two helmet. Now, as we zone back in, I'm just gonna make sure I use that consumable before we start going through our normal slaying. As we get close to big groups of enemies, a single rend will rip through the majority of them. And then I just have to kite away and try to preserve my HP for as long as possible. When it's time to generate again, we do the challenging shout to take less damage. We go in with the frenzy and just try to rip these guys apart yet again. Looks like this shaman was chilling me, slowing me down, but a single cut puts me back on the right side of that fight. Now, we can do some other things to optimize this in our talents. We're the most vulnerable when we're sitting here in melee range, obviously, right? Their barrier's gone. Let's go ahead and taunt and rend. We could use our lunging strike to dip around to enemies a bit more often to go to the edges of these fights. Remember, lunging strike is also a generator. So as we move through these groups, we're also getting more fury. Go ahead and potion again. Another thing we could do is in our talent tree, invest more heavily into Endless Fury. This would make our Frenzy actually generate considerably more fury per swing. I think it's 15% when maxed out. And that would mean I need to stay in melee less. Like we, we would be able to move around. Idols of the Overseer are here. We're gonna max out our Frenzy. Make sure we keep that maxed out. Again, eyeballs on our hotbar, making sure that never falls under three stacks. As more enemies show up, We'll taunt them, and we can even rend this pile of wood. Look how much that damage stacked up. And it'll die on its own. Right? There it goes. Di totally died on its own. I want to try this tactical iron skin. Uh, while iron skin is active, you heal for 10% of your barrier's original amount. If we're using this ability properly, and then continuing to invest points into it, we want to use that barrier when we're low, right? Let's go ahead and taunt. So if we're healing for 10% of our original barrier, that could be like 20% of our health pool that just gets returned to us. I'm gonna lunging strike into the back to set up the rend. Lunging strike out, to set up another rend. Lunging strike back in to set up another rend. And you actually have a decent amount of mobility, even without leap, even without charge, if you're using lunging strike in this manner. Uh, we don't have enough fury. I'm gonna see what that barrier healing is like. We're pretty low there. 
It's 10% of the barrier amount, not 10% of our health amount. But that didn't seem bad at all. We have an elite shaman here. How we deal with elites is pretty simple. Just right click them a few times and that'll take care of the problem. Lickety spit. If he gap closes away, we can just lunging strike towards him and rend a couple more, more times. And then I don't even have to be in range. He'll just die on his own. Lots of enemies in here and I didn't have my damage reduction built up with frenzies. So this is actually pretty sketchy. If I jump to the elite, we can start cleaving. We're out of fury, so I'm gonna pop my iron skin, try to mitigate a bit more damage, and then just gap close away to the potions that were on the ground. Every time I get enough fury, I'm just going to face the group and try to cleave one more time. That should kill this idol. That should kill the elite. Now we can have our taunt again, build up our frenzy stacks. Barrier, since we're low on health. It looks like another elite spawned over here. Uh, gap close back onto him before I get frozen. <laughs> Rebuild frenzy stacks quickly. We're good, we're good, we're good. And then one more rend cuts him down to size. Maintaining just my auto attack is so important for our overall well-being, and that should not be ignored. Killing an enemy with a core skill refunds 13% of the base fury cost. Can only happen once per spell cast. Looks like a lower roll for that, but life on kill is going to be huge for keeping me alive. We're definitely equipping that ring. So now that I have iron skin with its upgrades, I'm going to start to just put more points into iron skin itself. I've actually found that the healing I'm getting from it has been super instrumental to my survivability in here. And I'm able to mitigate damage pretty much all the time. So now I'm starting with a taunt, just building up my frenzy stacks, cleaving these enemies down. I'm getting fury back with that new ring that we found. And basically, if I ever got low on HP, or as this pool is wrapping up, I just pop iron skin, and it'll pretty much top me off without me having to use any potions. The sustain is actually getting really good. And then of course, for the next room, it will be ready again. Uh, this is actually a pretty, pretty good grouping here. And we have an elite laying poison on the ground. As you can see, three rends is all of that took. I'm gonna dash to the side to avoid any other attacks. And now that it looks like it's winding down, we just pop iron skin for the free heal. And iron skin will be ready for the next room that we jump into. Now, with all of the ads dead, we can travel to the room of Torbit. And I'll show you the real showstopper of this build. If you're able to stay in combat long enough to stack up multiple rins, enemies just melt. They just melt. So, we go in. He's not attacking just yet. I'm just going to pop one defensive to not have to move out of that. And then just start stacking up those bleeds. Every opportunity we get, we're just going to rend. I'm going to intentionally not dodge any of this stuff just to see how strong we've actually gotten. Now, I did use my iron skin there. It will be healing me back up. Let me get back into melee range here. Keep the rins going. The boss is below his first threshold for potions now. Make sure frenzy stays stacked. We're going to taunt yet again because there was a lot of enemies there. Mitigate as much of that as we can. When we get knocked back, we just gap close back in with our charge strike. Iron skin, now that our health was getting low, I'm gonna dash through just to get that potion because we used one. But I mean, that's exactly what the potions are for as well. The problem you run into is when you're running out of potions before you can use these defensive abilities to keep yourself alive. Uh, iron skin one more time. Fury was full, so we spend it on Ren. Demoralizing shout, that's 40% less damage. Fury was full, we spend it on Rend. Potion one more time. And that is a boss without really moving at all. If you compare this to what I went through earlier when I was trying Whirlwind, it is a night and day difference. What the f*** hippie?
That's not to say other builds for the Barbarian aren't viable. What I'm really trying to showcase is how I encountered a problem with the class and I was able to adjust my build to solve those problems by becoming much, much tankier. So if you want to see my talents one more time, I'm just going to scroll down here. This is how I've been progressing through the game with a lot of success, but there are way more than just this play style if you want to venture into Diablo 4. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I have an hour and 20 minutes left with the beta and I still have more videos to make.